Hooray, it's Pride Month. And who doesn't love celebrating sin? What I'm hoping for is maybe soon they'll recognize July as Lust and Anger Month so we can finally throw a parade for all the white beaters and pedophiles out there. Welcome in. This is Religionless Christianity. I am your host, Spencer. This is my beautiful wife, Nikki. Back from about a week hiatus, and it felt longer than it probably seemed to you guys. And we are super excited to be back with you. We look terrible. I mean, well, I do. She's always gorgeous. But we just moved into our new place. You can tell it kind of looks like a mess. Well, you can't tell, but we can tell. And you can see behind us, this is the new podcast sort of studio in its rare, barest form, I should say. Yeah. So, anywho, we got a good episode. So before we dive in, baby, do you want to say anything? I just want to thank you guys for your prayers. Uh, we got here safe. We didn't have any issues with any vehicles. We were both pulling. Well, I was pulling a trailer. He was pulling the van, and none of us trapped ourselves in any tiny parking lots because we are not good at backing up with those. <laughs> How that dare you? I'm my... a man. I can back up a trailer. <laughs> that was my biggest fear. <laughs> I would just get stuck and I'd be able to back up. But I am thankful we're here and it's it is still overwhelming. Like, I didn't realize how overwhelming it would be once we got here. I was thinking, oh, it's all over. And then it's like the unpacking and trying to find things and just the the hard part of just finding a church too so please pray that we get connected to sound biblical church yep we're leaving a great church so we want to find another one make sure you like and subscribe uh, if you're on youtube if you're on the podcast just follow us whatever platform you're on we would greatly appreciate it and we should be back on our normal monday wednesday friday schedule for the foreseeable future. So the question we're asking today is, what do you believe? Now, this is religion with Christianity. So we're obviously asking this in the context of Christianity. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not really concerned if you still think classic rock is good music, or if you think pineapple belongs on a pizza. Uh, you're wrong on both accounts, but I'm not concerned with that. We are concerned with what you believe about the faith that you say you follow. Mm -hmm. You know, we live in a world and a country that is increasingly hateful towards God, and you're basically mocked and scorned or just basically downright persecuted for what you believe. And because of that, it's difficult to know, you know, what you believe and stand for what you believe in. Mm -hmm. But in order to stand for something, you know, you have to know what you stand for, right? What is you're actually standing for? And that's kind of what we're asking today. What do you believe? So 65% of Americans claim to be Christians. We've talked about that before on this show. Uh, that number is not real. I mean, that's not a true reflection. People call themselves all kinds of things that they're not, you know, mm -hmm. good looking, funny, smart. You know, in my job, what you hear all the time is like, ah, I work so hard and everybody's lazy. And you're like, no, dude, you're lazy. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> tell yourself what you want to tell yourself, I guess. But, uh, so just kind of as we go through this episode, kind of do this exercise with us. You know, we'd love to hear from you in the comments on different things. And again, we're not theologians. We're not anybody of, you know, renowned. We're just two people that want to get closer to God. So if we're off base, let us know in the comments. But going through here, I believe most Christians sort of stop believing <laughs> Sadly, in Genesis 1, I think that's where most Christians fall away. You know, mm -hmm. we're kind of going through Genesis 1, talks about in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And we're like, yeah, cool. Got that. Yeah. Then he goes on to let there be light. And then you go all the way, keep scrolling all the way, all the way to Genesis 1, 6. And God says, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters. And you're like, ooh, I don't know, because another word for that expanse is firmament. 
started getting some people heated. So, <laughs> um, cold sweats breaking out, but just like that cat hanging out, just hang on with us as we scroll through here. And I think if you just keep going all the way, scrolling, scrolling, you'll get finally to Genesis 111. And uh, vegetation mm -hmm. starts sprouting and growing without the sun. You know, and I think that's, yeah. that's like, so you can't hold on to the big bang theory is our point. Like the order of the happenings, what the big bang caused. And so you can't have that fit into scripture. It is one or the other. So do you believe that God spoke? Do you believe he separated the waters that were on the earth? above and there's a firmament and that hebrew word for firmament is rakia it l l literally is a solid structure a dome there's other versions do you believe it and if this is chapter one of the bible and you don't believe that then why do you believe anything else in the bible yeah and you know roughly 50 percent of christians believe in some version of the big bang theory or evolution whether that's god causes evolution or uses evolution right. you know but we don't need science to explain the Bible for us. That's where belief comes it's in, right? It's either but... science or the Holy Spirit's your teacher. But, you know, we don't want to be kooks, right? We don't want to be considered science deniers, right? That's a bridge <laughs> too far for most of us. You know, I get what the Bible says about the vegetation sprouting before a sun. But we also know what Bill Nye, the science guy, said. And Bill Nye... He would never lie to you, right? He's a good He's dude. He's not even a scientist. He's How an actor. How dare you? He is America's scientist. I remember scientist. watching him in junior high. I thought he was, I really thought he was a scientist. I'm just a really cool, funny scientist. He's just a good old dude. Okay. But God, so get past Genesis 1. Um, God created the animals and man. Uh, don't even go into all that. Um, People might start turning off the podcast, the whole evolution thing. Yeah. yeah. It's just like we, we were created in the image of God. And if you think we came from monkeys, you're saying God looks like a monkey because we were created in his image. So if you tell me the earth is only seven to 10,000 years <laughs> old, that is not what Bill and I said. I'll slap you. So um, Christians will not have that kind of nonsense. Young Earth creationism. Hmm. Not having it on this show. What else is there? The flood. Do you believe in a worldwide flood? Like the whole Earth was flooded? Do you believe only Noah and his sons and their wives? What was it? Eight people were saved that we literally all came from Noah's family after everything had to start over? And I mean, that's what the Bible tells us, right? So do we believe it as Christians? Not only that, but the same verse tells us that Noah was 600 years old yeah. when he got into the ark. You know, do you believe that men and women, Adam and Eve, lived to be 900 years mm -hmm. old or older? That's a long time. Like, I really can't fathom that. Yeah, but do you believe it right? The Bible says they did. So where does your faith lie? And all the animals on the ark. It was, it wasn't just two of each animal. There was more because they even had some to sacrifice when they, you know, got on dry land. But yeah, like the whole earth is repopulated from the animals on the ark. Do you believe that? Yeah, I mean, many Christians don't, right? They're like, I want to see the ark, you yeah. know, and show me the ark and I'll believe, mm -hmm. you know. Or maybe they're like, hey, you know, we believe in a localized flood. It was the whole world for them, which was this small little piece. But the Bible doesn't say it was localized, right? So do yeah. we believe what the Bible says? Or are we going to kind of twist scripture to make it fit our worldview? Mm -hmm. And then you're like, all right, fine. Maybe it's just Genesis, right? You're a Christian, but let's forget about the creation and the whole, you know, world kind of science nonsense. Like, grow up, right? We're Christians. We can't be living, believing in fairy tales, right? I know. So, that's sad that they think that things in the Bible are like a fairy tale. That's something you that's hear increasingly. Crazy. Yeah, I'm not gonna we hear that on Facebook all the time with, you know, the the trolls that just want to jump on our page and 
tell us how stupid our beliefs are. So, but moving past Genesis, right? Do you believe in the Ten Commandments? Mm. That God gave us the Ten Commandments. Like he literally gave them to Moses on Mount Sinai. He came down in the thick cloud and he literally wrote them on stone tablets. That's what Exodus 31, 18 tells us. He wrote them with the finger of God. Do you believe that? I got to jump in and say, like, this is what Jesus talked about uh, children. Like, you cannot come to me unless you're like a child and that faith, like children believe in, you know, these fairy tales. But do you believe it? All, a little kid reading the Bible, nobody's telling them anything. Otherwise, yeah, they're going to believe it. We don't have another opinion over here or someone in a white coat telling us they're smarter and they have degrees and you know what yeah, I, mean? I mean? Satan's children, right? The Bible tells us that you can be a child of Satan. Satan's a father of lies. Are you going to be swayed to the left, to the right? You know, from these, I, I can't believe that God literally wrote the Ten Commandments. So, fine. We'll give it a rest, right? Religionless Christianity. We're Christians. Get off this Old Testament nonsense. We're not Jews. We're not reading the Torah. Let's get to the meat, right? <laughs> That's what we want to do. The New Testament. We feel you. We're not Pharisees. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's move on to the New Testament. Like, like do you believe is it John 1.1? 1, 1? Yeah. What does John 1.1 1, 1 say? Let me pull it up here. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All right. I'm going to stop you. I see what you did there. She tried to pull a little trickery on us, but we're not going to let it happen, right? Using the New Testament to refer back to the Old Testament? No. Christians aren't having that nonsense. So move along. We're not going back to the Old Testament. Well, do you believe in the gifts of the Spirit? Start breaking out in tongues on here. Start freaking everybody out. But yeah, do you have, believe in the gifts of the Spirit? Like, do you believe that we have the power to lay hands on the sick and that they'll be healed? Mm -hmm. That we have the authority to cast out demons? That we can raise the dead back to life? Like, this is all promised to us as followers yeah. of Christ. This is not just an Old Testament fairy tale, supposedly, right? This is Jesus Christ, our religious namesake, right? Do we believe yeah. it? I mean, a lot of Christians don't. Depends on your denomination, right? Yeah. Yeah, some people are uncomfortable. They're uncomfortable doing the things you're supposed to be doing in the kingdom of God. And, and that verse that even came up today in church that someone on Facebook had posted, and I was like, I love that verse. It's my favorite. And I can't remember where something it's at. Something like little flocks and do Luke not or something. Fear, do not fear a little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And that I just love that verse. Like it's his good pleasure to give us the kingdom, and that's a part of operating in his kingdom. Yeah, the Holy Spirit. So before we dive into this next one, please take a second to like and subscribe to the channel. Follow us if you're on the podcast because you're probably about to turn us off. But do you believe in predestination and election? Now we're not talking about what level. You believe predestination, but do you believe it, right? Because the Bible speaks about it. The New Testament speaks about it. There are um, a lot of different answers to what that means. Yeah, That's I'll pull it thing. up right here. Just uh, so I'm not the crazy one. It's Paul. Paul's the crazy Paul. one. Ephesians 1.5. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has blessed us, or blessed us in the beloved. Does it say in love he did this or in looking to the future to see we would choose him that he did this? So again, different levels. <laughs> Christianity has different levels, but do you believe? It, predestination is a huge dividing line yeah. in Christianity. So do you believe it? If the Bible talks on it, is that something you're gonna believe in? Well. It is Gay Pride Month. Do you believe that homosexuality is a sin? You freaking zealot. Are you <laughs> kidding me? I'm sorry for the audience. How dare her bring up homosexuality? Jimmy Carter told us that Jesus never spoke <laughs> about homosexuality. 
Well, right? What are you I mean, gonna believe? A lot of churches nowadays. We actually just had that conversation with the pastor at the church we went to. Um, I didn't even notice it. We walked in and Nikki, we were just shaking hands. Hi, how are you? We're new here. And she was just like, her face was dead. And I didn't know why. I was like, what is happening with Nikki? And we finally got done and we walked in and she was like, we have to leave. I was like, <laughs> she's like, did you see that girl? She was wearing like all rainbow. Like her whole outfit was rainbow. Even sunglasses. I was like, like who wears sunglasses in the church? No. She's like, we need to find out if they support like homosexuality in the church or transgenderism. And I actually got flustered. Like I went over that. I was like, this is not a question I ever thought I would have to ask a pastor. So I'm like asking him and I was like, what, like, what are your guys' beliefs here? And like, they were he rambling seemed, off. Well, he seemed kind of like surprised that you asked. He's like, of course, we believe Jesus and is God. They weren't, they weren't a, a homosexual endorsing church or anything no. like that. Yeah. And the pastor, I guess, went and talked to the girls like, hey, it's wrong time of the month to be wearing, or wrong time of the year to be wearing stuff like well, that. Well, she knew. That's the thing. I was like, she Probably. knows what she's doing. But yeah, that's a big divider in the church right now, right? Homosexuality. Hmm. Um, another one, do you believe that the Christian life isn't all about health, wealth, and prosperity? Rather, the Christian life is about taking up your cross daily, mm -hmm. that you'll be hated for your faith just as Christ was hated. That's what the Bible tells us, right? If you're not prepared for that, you're going to be one of those people who say, I tried it and it, Christianity didn't work for me. You're gonna, yeah. That's going to happen to you if that's what you think Christianity is. Yep, you're going to fall away because... Um, saying a simple prayer doesn't equal an easy life. Right. So. Like, do you believe that? Yeah. Do Just you saying believe? a prayer doesn't do anything. It's because faith without works is dead. And if there's no works of the Holy Spirit following your magic prayer, you said, you say it like it's a magical word and you didn't mean it in your heart. You're just chanting it. Then it's, that's not going to do anything for you. No. Let's sell. It's empty words. That's what it is. Yeah, you're not a Christian simply by saying a prayer. Yeah. You know. But do you believe? Do you believe in the second coming of Jesus? That He's going to establish new heavens and new earth. Do you think that, like the earth, like if you believe that, you can't believe in climate change and. Cool. Yeah, that's something we hear all the time now. And again, Christians are divided on this, right? Like we're told every, you know, five years that in 10 years, the earth is going to be uninhabitable because of climate change. And we're all going to die from climate change. Or hey, a meteor or, is going to hit the earth. Or you think we got to leave the earth and go live on another planet. Right. No, the Bible doesn't support that at all. That is the stupidest theory I've ever heard. I'm just... You know, but that's again, all in space. Do you believe, right? Because yeah. the Bible tells you the ending of the story. It tells you that Jesus is going to come back, that he's going to draw us up. New heaven and new earth is going to come down. Mm -hmm. Or are you going to be swayed to the left or the right to that wide path? Climate change, meteor strikes. We're going to go live on Mars, <laughs> right? The Bible doesn't say that. So what do you believe? No, the word says the heavens are the Lord's and the earth he has given to the children of men. God didn't give the heavens or space or whatever to us. You guys the are about to earth get Nikki fired up here. Mm -hmm. So we got to wrap this thing up. <laughs> she starts freaking out. So that's the question we want to leave you with. What do you believe? Do you believe the word of God? Like Second Timothy says, all scripture is, is breathed out by God and profitable mm -hmm. for teaching. Or do you believe it until proven otherwise? And I ask because the former is faith. The latter is not. Like if you're just believing the Bible until somebody offers you a better point of view, that's not faith. But that's what, that's what the devil did to Eve. He came in, like she knew what God said. He came in and said, but did God say? Does he really mean that? Yep, she got a different point of view yep. and she waffled. God's holding out on you. Yep. Yeah, that's... So it's kind of like people will be like, well, yeah, I believe, you know, God created the heavens and the earth and you believe that by faith, but then you go watch a documentary and be like, nope, they talked about Big Bang Theory. So that makes sense now. I'm going to go believe that because it's just, you look stupid believing God's word based on faith. 
And if somebody has a scientific way to explain something, and it's not even scientific, it's a theory. There's no way of testing it. But because it's a scientist, we hold them to a higher um, authority than we hold God's word. Yeah. And we elevate man and And his opinion. This is what sort of distorts scripture, right? These ideas get married to scripture. And then this Mm -hmm. is where you start to hear things like, well, you know, God was the big bang, right? And he used evolution to create man and the earth and all these things. Mm -mm. But like, which God? Because that's not what the Bible says, right? So you're creating a God in your image now. And Paul tells us in Romans um, 3 verse 4, let God be true, though everyone were a liar. And in the world mm-hmm. we're living in with technology, deep fakes, AIs around the corner, like, man, this is so we're important. We're going to be deceived if we do not know the word of God. Yeah, like we just mentioned, the Bible says Satan is the father of lies. And he's had many thousands of years, seven to 10,000 specifically, <laughs> in the Bible, to craft those skills, yeah. right? Like he's pretty good at presenting an argument to convince you other than what the Bible says. And then this is what's going to be testing our faith in the days to come. So, um, but it is worldwide, the worldwide deception. And we talked about that before. Like you you did like a, you wanted to do a poll. Yeah. We're still working our way through that. Um, (laughs) got kicked off a couple groups for that one. So we'll see what happens. Um, but if you want to read Romans four or Corinthians or Mm -hmm. yeah, four, nine through 10, before we wrap this thing up. Yeah, so Paul says, for I think that God has exhibited us apostles as last of all, like men sentenced to death, because we have become a spectacle to the world, to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake. We need to become comfortable being fools for Christ's sake. Mm -hmm. Like the apostles were in their time, they were considered fools in their time. You know, but if we're busy currying the world's favor and seeking approval in men's eyes, there is no salvation there. Um, Mm -hmm. There's only emptiness. So will you stand on God's word and stand against the latest scientific evidence or are you going to fold? Yeah, like just enduring all things till the end. Like when your husband or wife gets old and gray, are you going to stay with them? Are you going to go and marry someone younger, better looking? Like. If you can't endure a marriage through all the hard times, how are you going to endure the testing of your faith, your devotion to God? And, and things I've had to ask myself, like, you know, giving up a career job and staying home and raising kids. Are you going to be able to sacrifice um, and have a lower income and live below your means? Yeah, feminism, because, feminism will tell you for the last... 40 years that that's foolish, right? You can be everything a man is. But it's a whole thing <clears throat> comparing, comparing yourself to others and you want to have everything everybody else has. So you sacrifice what's most important to just have this image. It's all nothing. It's all, it's all for nothing. Yeah. So we're moving into perilous times. Um, obviously we've been talking about that for a while. I'm sure your pastors have been talking about it for a while. Um, and you need to decide where you stand, you know, because Nikki's mentioned it in previous episodes, and I'm sure you've heard it elsewhere before, that there is no walk in the fence anymore. Satan owns the fence. Mm-hmm. So you need to pick a side. And if you're having a hard time, you need to pray like the man who brought his son to Jesus in Mark 9 um, in verses 23 and 24. Uh, Jesus said to him, all things are possible for one who believes. And immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can pray, ask God to help you in your unbelief. If you hear these things, big bang theory, evolution, and you're really struggling with it, pray, right? God says to ask and you will receive, like he doesn't withhold wisdom and knowledge from his children. So it's not going to be easy, right? You're going to lose friends. You'll make enemies. You'll get laughed at, but eternal life is the reward for those who stand firm and endure to the end. Uh, Laughing and mockery is last for just a moment so as we get ready to wrap this episode up baby do you have anything you want to say i just in light of all this just remember what jesus endured like go read the gospels and how he went through everything that we're going to go through and more and if he can 
do it. He gives us the strength. We have the Holy Spirit to endure all things. It's not impossible. Yep. If you can get nailed to a cross, you can take your neighbor laughing at you. Right. So, yeah. Um, it's not easy, but yeah, just pray, be in prayer about it. But anyways, we'll talk to you guys again on Wednesday. Um, please again, make sure you like, subscribe. That's all we got for you guys. We love you. God bless.